Hey, Brixel! The Guild Wars 2 team is hiring. We're up to our elongated ears on Lunar New Year content, and while we still don't have a 2023 roadmap, data miners are doing their best to keep us informed. I'm glad you decided to join me today as you farm out more luck. I'm always honored to grace your second monitor. So let's get to it. Welcome to Last Week Interior. Before we get cracking on with the news, I'd like to shout out the amazing patrons that keep this channel going. If you'd like to support the channel, all relevant links are down below the like button. Alrighty, to kick us off this week, the official ArenaNet Twitter account shared some interesting news. They're hiring. Yeah, I know we've covered a few posts related to Anet job postings in the past, and I know it doesn't necessarily mean anything big, but come on, I love speculating. Now, we have confirmed that Anet are working on an unannounced project. The question is, what is that unannounced project? Figuring out exactly what Anet is working on has become a part-time obsession for Guild Wars 2 internet sleuths. Though, admittedly, this most recent news leaves far less room for that spicy speculation we all love. While the previous job posts we reported on only said that they were for an unannounced project, this round of hires is rather clear in being an effort to bolster the Guild Wars 2 production team. Yeah, it's not related to the unannounced project. At least, it's super unlikely. So somewhat less spicy than we'd like, but not entirely spice-free. Because what are these new hires? And more to the point, why should we, the players, care? Well, the original Anet tweet says, We're hiring for a number of positions that you can check out on our greenhouse board. Here are a few currently available. Senior Quest Designer, Senior Systems Designer, and Associate Combat Designer. Now, yes, I hear you freaking out about the fact that there are so many open senior development positions on the Guild Wars team. I mean, it does almost seem like there's been a massive talent range from the studio, right? But be still your nerves. Let Brixel's velvety words grant you some assurance. No, I don't think Anet are rushing to plug holes. The hiring of new talent is common practice in game development, especially when a studio is in the middle of or nearing the end of pre-production on a project. And as many of you may know, Guild Wars 2 is currently in pre-production on its unnamed fourth expansion. So if any of you have experience in any of these fields and you'd like to help make Guild Wars 2, be sure to hit up Anet's job boards. More importantly, once you do have the job, be sure to leak any and all information on the game to me. That'd be swell. Moving on. It's Lunar New Year's and you know what that means, a new exotic stat selectable back piece. <laughs> Jokes aside, there are a ton of activities available for players to tackle, all in celebration of the rabbity goodness that is New Year's. Now, yes, I have heard the lamentations of players that there are no new activities this year, but come on, at some point there's frankly so much to do that adding anything else would arguably just result in holiday bloat. And no, not the pants unbuttoning for another piece of pie kind of holiday bloat. No, more like you got so much shit to get done in an event that you can't realistically do all of it. But I digress, we were talking Lunar New Year's activities. So first up is Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball Arena, a PvP game of dodgeball that sadly has nothing to do with spiky haired aliens that scream themselves blonde. Then we got the Celestial Challenge, a series of activities that rewards a stackable lucky aura boon. Next, of course, we got the Mandatory Mount Race, this time in Divinity's Reach. Lastly, we got the Firecracker Lighting. Get them all lit in under 5 minutes for a golden adventure chest. The traditional special vendors can also be found throughout Tyria and the capital cities, all featuring some time-sensitive rewards that might never be seen again. Or until next year. Or until they pop up on the gem store. Oh, Evan Nashblade, you sneak. So yeah, get busy and start farming some goodies. You got until January 31st, then <sighs> Lunar New Year's ends and we gotta go back to equipping f***ing <coughs> bunny ears just to feel something. <clears throat> Okay, so the last news item for the week comes from one of the sleuthiest of Guild Wars 2 sleuths, That Shaman, otherwise known as the official con -er of Guild Wars 2 Twitter. Now, holy sh**, as far as data mining is concerned, I've rarely seen such a veritable mind dump. That Shaman explained on Reddit, the reason why we had to download 160,000 plus files today was because almost every one of the following file types has been patched in the dat file. The file types in question are models, maps, shaders, havoc physics information, music cues, and fonts. That Shaman speculates that this is most likely in anticipation for the full DirectX 11 transition. 
Now you'll remember we spoke about DX11 implementation last week, and that the Guild Wars 2 team stated that it's a priority for the beginning of 2023. So yeah, I concur with that shaman. Now a few data mined items such as gem store skins and mounts went live with the launch of Lunar New Year, but a majority of the mined information is yet to be seen in game. So if you'd like a more comprehensive list of what was data mined, check out the link to that shaman's reddit post in the description. The final thing I'd like to leave you guys with this week is a comment left by JCM2606 on my most recent video regarding the Chromium Embedded Framework coming to Guild Wars 2. Coherent and Chromium Embedded Framework CEF, are both basically tools to develop user interfaces, i.e. the menus, the trading post, the ability bar, etc. Using the same techniques and technologies that power modern web browsers like Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. The main difference between the two is that while Coherent is just a UI tool that supports the same rendering functionalities of modern web browsers, CEF allows you to embed the entire Chromium web browser, which is the engine powering Chrome, Opera, Brave, etc., into your program. This likely means that ANET gets access to more functionality by moving to CEF as it's a fully fledged web browser. Plus, they'll likely have a much easier time connecting the game's UI to their own online game services and APIs. Thanks so much for the explanation. Now, if I'm understanding JCM2606 correctly, this means that the devs will have much more freedom in how they display information in the UI, allow for more ease of use with things like the trading post, at least I hope so, because dear god the trading post is slow, and better API integration, which I imagine will open the doors for a whole new world of third-party applications. Thanks again for the explanation, I really appreciate it. Be sure to leave your thoughts on any and all topics we covered this week, and I could be responding to you in a future episode of Last Week Interior. But that's where I'm going to leave it for this week. If you're looking for more in-depth Guild Wars 2 info, as well as info on the builds I play, check out Hardstuck.gg. Hardstuck has the best guides, builds, and more interior. And while you're out there on your Chromium Embedded Framework, I think I got that right. <laughs> Why don't you check out my Twitch? I stream Guild Wars 2 and a few other games every week, unless the government chooses to turn the power off which happens a lot. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and supporters over on Twitch, and an even huger thank you to my Guardian tier patrons, Anthony Hodgson, Liam Pullis, and Brain Not Bright. You guys are badasses, and I hear you smell really good. And with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. We're getting closer and closer to the 2023 Guild Wars 2 roadmap, so be sure to stick with us for all the info and my fun opinions when it all drops. But for now, Brixel loves you very much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.